Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Connecting with Kim here on Tampa Bay Arts and Education Network. I'm your host, Kim Drogi, and we are so glad you joined us today because we have another exciting episode where we cover people, places, and entities that make living in this corner of paradise that much better. So before we get started, I also want to say you can catch the audio of our show on Sun Radio 96.3 FM in Sun City Center and on your favorite streaming platform. And it's another momentous day because we have a first timer on our show. And I love that because it, they always have a great time and they always want to come back. So what could be better than that? So I'd like to introduce you to my guest. And his name is Nadir Johnson, and he is from Operation International Gift of Knowledge. Welcome to Connecting with Kim, Nadir. Thank you, Kim. Thank you for having me. Thank you for the opportunity. Oh, Thank it's you. our pleasure. Thank you. These are the kind of shows we love to do. I happen to know what he's going to talk about but and, and why this is going to be a great show. Um, I want to give you an opportunity mm -hmm. at the beginning of the show to uh, share a little bit with the audience listening and watching sure, out there, sure, a little sure. bit about your life journey, because you just never know mm -hmm. when somebody watching and listening has shared something in common with mm -hmm. you. Would love to. Uh, I was born and raised in uh, New York, upstate New York, Poughkeepsie, New York. Uh, I left Poughkeepsie, New York when I was 19 years old. Uh, I enlisted in the Air Force. Uh, I was an air traffic controller in the Air Force. Uh, I got out of the Air Force. I realized that uh, air traffic control was not for me. And so I got out of the Air Force and I ended up going to uh, photography school, uh, the Art Institute of Atlanta. So I got a degree from the Art Institute of Atlanta in photography, uh, Associates Applied Arts. And so uh, pretty much for the last uh, 35 years, that's what I've been doing. I've been a professional photographer. And so uh, my wife and I happily married. Uh, we have, uh, we're celebrating our 38th year next month. Uh, oh, congratulations. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Four children. Matter of fact, my, my youngest, my son, is uh, he's in his last year of medical school. Cool. Yeah, so he's in his last year. He's getting ready to uh, do his residency at uh, John Hopkins. And so uh, we were in uh, Hampton, Virginia. We were in Hampton, Virginia. And then my wife was able to get an assignment and she told me this was the pinnacle of her career and that she wanted, she was offering her job at the Pentagon. And so obviously we said, let's go for it. So let's we go. packed up everything from Hampton, Virginia, and we moved to uh, Washington, D.C. And so we were there uh, a couple years during the pandemic we were there. And then, uh, we, matter of fact, we were stationed in the Air Force over at Patrick Air Force Base in Cocoa Beach. Mm -hmm. And so we were there about 30 years ago. And so uh, 30 years ago, but we had orders. We had to leave, and we've been 30 years trying to get back to Florida. <laughs> yeah, 30 years trying to get back. And you Who made it. Thought? <laughs> and we made it. And so uh, I've been here for a year. Uh, I left a year early. I wanted to get things started. My wife just relocated permanently here in uh, November. So I've been here for about 13 months. And she's been here for the last two months permanently. She's been on and off, coming back and forth for the whole year. And so uh, so pretty much uh, yeah. that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Stick to it. And, you know, it's so funny, folks, because I met Nadir mm -hmm. uh, through his photography business mm -hmm. because he and his wife, his lovely wife, were um, – shooting um, the uh, for the South Hillsboro Chamber of Commerce where I volunteer. Mm. They were shooting our pictures for mm. our annual banquet. And so that's how I originally met Nadir and his wife. And, um, and I've seen him at other functions w as a professional photographer. And then one day, he strolls into the chamber and where on, uh, I work there Thursday afternoons, and we started talking about the subject we're going to discuss with you today. Um, and he, I said, you need to come on my show mm -hmm. and talk about that because yes. that's the kind of stuff I love to cover. Mm -hmm. And I one other thing about your uh, journey, life's journey that mm -hmm. struck me mm -hmm. uh, when you said it is sometimes in life, mm -hmm. it's more important to know what you don't want to do mm -hmm. or what you don't want to be mm -hmm. than what you want to be. Yeah, and you good. discovered that, yeah, you know, I don't want to be. I mean, yeah, I did sure. it, but I don't want to mm -hmm. be that, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that was, I mean, that was, I think sure. that's very mature of you mm -hmm. to say, mm -hmm. okay, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. not doing that. I'm starting over. Sure, sure. And one thing, too, uh, as I got out of the Air Force, my wife stayed in mm. the Air Force. Ah. So she did 28 years. Wow. So I did 28 years with her. 
<laughs> I did 28 <laughs> years with her. I, I got it. Yeah. I, I understand okay. what you're so, Yeah, so she did 28 <laughs> years. And so for me, I realized uh, if we were going to stay married, I felt like being in the Air Force, we were going to have change was par for the course. Right. And I felt like I really had to have a way where I can provide my own income. I could get established no matter where we were. And, and that's photography is a great thing to do yeah, that, right? Photography has allowed me to do that. And yeah. we certainly thank both of you for your service to oh, our country. Uh, and uh, because we, we value our, our vets mm -hmm. and we value our active service people. So let's talk about Operation International Gift of Knowledge. Wow. Tell, first of to all, you don't have to tell people what it is. Yeah. I mean, I know what it is, but right. you don't have to tell them what it is. So Operation International Gift of Knowledge is a, a 501c3 nonprofit organization in good standing, in good standing. And that's important, too, because mm -hmm. I want to tell you people, there's a database mm -hmm. of all those non nonprofits. Sure. And when you're a nonprofit, you have access to that database, you and you can look up and see what every nonprofit mm -hmm. is doing, their tax status, mm -hmm. you know, with their everything, right? Just, just so go on in good Sunday. standing is important. Yeah, in good standing. Mm -hmm. And so we've been in existence ever since uh, 2008. We've mm -hmm. been in existence. Uh, our mission is to uh, serve by providing children suffering from extreme poverty in Uganda, East Africa with educational, nutritional, and medical access so they might achieve God's given purpose for them, which is to prosper them and not cause them harm. And so again, we're sponsoring orphans in Uganda, East Africa. Uh, we've been doing that since 2008. and. Uh, Personally, I've been to Uganda, East Africa 19 times. So we're getting ready to take a mission team back to Uganda this May, mm -hmm. which will be my 20th time, you know, God willing. Yeah. So uh, what, I mean, what was the impetus to starting this nonprofit? Okay, it's a testimony. Yeah, <laughs> this is, well, share it. This is real talk now. Yeah, share it. Okay, so uh, in the year 2000, I had a medical challenge. Mm -hmm. uh, in the year 2000, I was diagnosed with hepatitis C. Before I go any further, I want to make sure everybody understands I am cured now. I'm cured, you know, hepatitis C free. However, in 2000, when I was diagnosed, uh, to be truthful, uh, I didn't handle it well. And uh, for five years, I was kind of in and out of uh, depression, to be truthful, mm -hmm. because uh, this was the first time I had to handle, you know, facing my mortality. Well, I mean, yeah. hepatitis C is nothing to sneeze at, sure. right? Sure, and, and you're absolutely right. And so uh, during the five years, I was never raised in a church, Kim, but my wife was raised in a church. Mm -hmm. And she kept telling me, you can't do this alone. You can't do this alone. You have to turn it over to God, turn it over to God. Well, five years later, it really impacted me, and I understood, and I heard the words she was saying. So in 2005, I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, and I repented and believed that he died on the cross for my sins. Mm -hmm. And so I became born again in 2005. Now, in 2005, uh, let's go fast forward to 2008. In 2008, by that time, uh, my spiritual walk had matured to the point that I understood every perfect and good thing came from God, of which one of them was my photography. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in 2008, I petitioned God for a way to be able to utilize my talents for the uplifting of his kingdom. Mm -hmm. Lo and behold, he heard my prayer. And so what happened is the church that uh, I joined, they sent me on a medical mission. So mm -hmm. we were doing a mission. We sent me on a medical mission to Uganda, East Africa, because people ask me, why Uganda? And I try to tell them, I didn't pick Uganda, Uganda picked Uganda me. Uganda picked you. Uganda picked me. Yeah, and so uh, we're doing a medical mission, and while I'm doing a medical mission, I was a photographer for the medical mission. Got it. And so what happens is uh, when I'm doing work like that, I shoot so much during the day that I really don't have time to look at it. I just download it and then get ready for the next day. Right. Well, while I'm shooting there, uh, we have people lined up ready to be processed and I'm taking their photos. And I see this little girl, she's a little girl, she's about one years old, and I turn to take her picture. And so as I turn to take her picture, everything that I did she did. 
So we had kind of like this choreography mm -hmm. type thing going. We're entertaining them. And so when I would crouch down to take her pictures, she would crouch down, so on and so forth. So she's one years old, mind you. Wow. Okay. All right, so what happened? That's pretty special for a one year old. Absolutely. You know, so uh, have and behold, I go back to the, I come back to the States and was like, come back to the states I'm going through all of the images mm -hmm. and now I get to her yeah and so when I get to her I'm revisiting that warm fuzzy feeling that I got from her right. and I said oh, wow well okay so fast forward the next year the next year my church goes back to the same place and I'm blessed again to be on the team as a photographer right well when I go there when I go there I see the little girl again she remembers me. She remembers me. So right then and there, uh, I made a covenant with God that I was going to try to do everything I could for this little girl and her families. So I called back to the States to my wife, and I asked her what she thought. She said, yeah, I'm 100% behind you. If that's what you, you want to do, I back you. And so right then and there, we started sponsoring. Her name is Esther. Mm -hmm. Okay, we started sponsoring Esther. So that was in uh, 2009. Mm -hmm. Now, in 2014, uh, it gets thicker, okay, my testimony. In 2014, I started claiming 2014 in January of 2014 of my year of breakthrough. Okay. Didn't know what it was, but I was claiming it as my year of breakthrough. Well, right around November of that year, you remember that hepatitis C I was telling you mm -hmm. about? Well, it was wreaking havoc with my body. Mm -hmm. uh, I had so much toxicity in my blood that they couldn't even keep track. It was off the charts and stuff. And so my wife would come. Pick I'm me surprised up. you're still functioning. Yeah, yeah. To God be the glory. You know? To God be I the mean, glory. I mean, seriously. I'm still here. Uh, hepatitis you know. C is debilitating. Yes, yes, yes. And so uh, what happens is 2014, uh, year of breakthrough and so in 2014 around November my wife would pick me up I'm feeling really bad I go to the gastroenterologist when mm -hmm. my gastroenterologist tells me and again we all know a lot of times it's dark is just before the dawn right so she sent me to a liver specialist mm -hmm. and so the liver specialist uh, they asked me if I had taken the treatment before and I did I did in 2000 but mm -hmm. I was a non-responder Right. And so I told him, yeah, I took it back in 2000. I was a non But a lot of things had changed between 2000 and 2014, Come on. right? Now you're preaching to the choir. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so what happened was uh, she asked me, and I said, yeah, you know, let's, let's go. You know, I, they said, you'll know in two weeks. I said, sure. And so I had like over a million units of that in my blood. So I go ahead, I take the uh, medication. So when I come back in two weeks, Ken, it's less than 50. So this, you were really responding. It's less than 50. When I come back the next two weeks, it's undetected. It's undetectable. So to God be the glory. Yes. Now what happens is uh, somebody blessed me to read the prayer of Jabez. The prayer of Jabez is in the Bible. Mm -hmm. It's only about a paragraph but it's a very, very powerful prayer. Mm -hmm. And what Jabez is asking the Lord to do to increase his territory, but in the process of increasing his territory, to come down and hold his hand and guide him through it so he doesn't commit evil or anything like that, to mm -hmm. come down and actually guide, because sometimes increase is not good if it's not anointed by God. Exactly. And so I'm wondering, so I'm hearing this, and this is uh, 2014. Now, mind you, I'm just about cured from the hepatitis C. And I'm saying, okay, God, <laughs> what are you trying to tell me? Mm -hmm. And so what I gathered from that is that little girl that you have been sponsoring, now what I want you to do is I want you to sponsor more. I want you to increase your territory. That's right. And I said, okay. Spread the God, love. Yes, I'm going to be obedient. I said, okay. And so pretty much in 2014, that's when Opera Operation International Gift of Knowledge was born. 
Oh so, my gosh, that yeah. is such an incredible yeah. story. If you are just joining me now on Connecting with Kim, my guest in the chair is Nadir Johnson, who is here today discussing with us Operation International Gift of Knowledge, which is a NPO that supports Ugandan children in uh, and he, education, nutritionally, and medically. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're hearing the story of how that, de that, that developed. And he's also a professional photographer, so mm -hmm. I, I always feel like I should, because I've seen your work, it's really Thank good. you. And Thank um, you in fact, he helped us before with our fashion job. <laughs> Uh, before the show, before we start recording. So anyway, uh, wow. So 2014 for you mm -hmm. was like a watershed year. Mm -hmm. You know, it was a total transformation of your mm -hmm. life mm -hmm. because now you're, you've been cured of your hepatitis C, mm -hmm. which can be very debilitating. Mm -hmm. And you are uh, listening uh, and receptive mm -hmm. to, uh, to the Lord guiding you to, to show even more love and help even more people. I got one thing to add with that. Uh, when I talk about the year of breakthrough, uh, in 2014, during that same time, Kim, I hadn't seen my biological father in 30 years. Oh, wow. Yeah, 30 years. And so my mother was in a uh, nursing home. Mm -hmm. And so my sister gave me a call. She said, listen, uh, Ma's not doing too good. Mm -hmm. If you're going to see her, you need to come right now. Now where, now, where, now, where is this? This was in New York. So okay, I, New York. Okay, yeah, I so was in Virginia. Back, they, they're, all, they're all still I'm there. in okay. Virginia. Yeah. And she said, well, Ma, you know, Ma's not doing too good. If mm -hmm. you, you know, you need to come right now. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, I'm on my way. Now, as I was going, uh, my father was in New Jersey. I had an address where he lived at. Uh, but before we left, me, my wife, and my daughter, we prayed that something supernatural, something miraculous was going to happen on this journey. Mm -hmm. And so as I'm driving, I decided to go and look for my father. Mm -hmm. And so when I go to look for my father, I go to the address that I had. My half-sister sees me, and when she looks at me, she says, I know you. You're my brother. And I said, well, how do you know that? And she said, you look just like him. I said, wow. I said, well, is he around? She said, yeah, come on. I'm going to take you around the corner to him. Mm -hmm. And so she took me around the corner to him. And when she took me around the corner to him, he came out. He saw me. And when he saw me, I think he really couldn't look at me. He looked away. And at the time, my wife and I had just finished a marital boot camp basically on Corinthians. Mm -hmm. So my capacity to love was really heightened. <laughs> right yeah. Open, right? Not just my wife, but everything. Right. And so when I seen him and I told him, I put my hand around him. I said, listen, I'm not here to judge you. I said, I'm just glad to see you and right. I want you to know I love you. Right. And I think that kind of relaxed him. Well, where I'm going with this is he told me that, uh, that he was dying. Oh. And when he told me he was dying, he told me he had liver cancer. He told me he had liver cancer from hepatitis C. Oh my gosh. And so honestly, I'm floored. Yeah, you are like. I'm floored. I'm saying, You're like head blown. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. Okay, so God allows us to have this time for a whole year. Uh, pretty much the next year, about the same time, he passes. Mm -hmm. So I go to the funeral. When I go to the funeral, up at the casket, I go, and there's a gentleman there. I'm looking at him. He's looking at me. We look just alike. And I said, yeah, that's my father. I didn't know him too well. You know, he really did nothing for me. So he says, well, <laughs> that's my father, too. And I live right here, and he really didn't do anything for me. Now, where I'm going with this, it says, yeah, um, he just died of hepatitis C. Uh, I'm just cured of hepatitis C, my brother tells me. He says, yeah, well, I have hepatitis C. So I'm thinking there's three of us. This is like, this is getting kind of it's spooky. Dude, now it gets better. Yeah. So there's three of us. And so what I felt is I understand the trilogy. The Father, mm -hmm. the Son, Father, and, Son and the, the Holy, Holy Ghost. Well, wow. So what I felt then was God was telling me, he said, listen, I got to take one of you right now. I had to take one. That was my father. Mm -hmm. He said, one of y'all is going to have to keep this disease. That was my brother. And he said, one of y'all I'm going to cure. And that was me because I had more work to do. Yeah, exactly. And so, yeah. That's amazing. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't mean to divert, but you did say that you're, you got the call from your sister because your mother wasn't doing well. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, what she happened passed. on your... She passed. Okay, I'm so yeah, sorry about passed. that. It's, I, I'm, I'm blessed to still have my mother. Sure. 
Yeah, it 94, is a yeah. and I'm blessed to have her. Yeah. Uh, we text each other first thing Good in the morning every day, and I, give the, I thank God every single day I have Good my mother. Good for you, Karen. You know, I'm so Good happy. for you. So, okay, so you started in 2004. You started with this little one-year-old girl, mm -hmm. and it went from there, supporting mm -hmm. her family, mm -hmm. and then uh, you, were, you felt called by the Lord to increase mm -hmm. and support more families. So tell me, you know, where are we right now in mm -hmm. Operation okay, so where uh, we're International at right now, Gift of Not, uh, which is quite a mouthful, my dear. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I I thought mean, I'm, about, not, I'm not criticizing. I'm going to say it's a mouthful. I thought about shortening, but again, it was from the Lord. That was the I spirit know, he put like, on Like, me. is there an acronym we can make over right. there? O-I-G-O-K. O-I-G-O-K. <laughs> so a lot of people know about that. And so uh, we have 31 orphans in Uganda, East Africa, that we sponsor. Mm -hmm. I, like I said, I've been there 19 times. Mm -hmm. uh, getting ready for 20. Getting ready for 20 in May. Matter of fact, during Hurricane Ian. Oh, I was going to ask you mm -hmm. about. Well, I was going to ask you about two things. Like, how did COVID affect this, and how did you know? Did the hurricanes have any? But mainly, did COVID have any? Uh, any kind of what kind of impact did COVID have on your, on on your nonprofit and your missions? Well, to Uganda, it was devastating. Yeah. Uh, I would think uh, any third world country. Yeah. COVID would really. If you think we had it bad. Yeah. COVID was really, like really bad. Worse. When we talk about social distancing, yeah. there's no way they could social distance. Mm -hmm. So they really, really had it bad. As a matter of fact, Uganda was one of the first principalities to shut everything down. Really? When we did it in March, Uganda did it in February. Okay. And so uh, we, we were so thankful to our sponsors because during that time, they stayed with us. No, they didn't desert you. They didn't desert it. And so I was walking one I day that. and I realized, I said, well, even though these kids are not in school, right. they still need a roof over their head. Right. And they still need food Well, they food still need food and medicine and, you know, yeah. They still yeah. need everything they needed yeah. before, you yeah. know. And so, again, our, our sponsors continued with us and mm -hmm. we were able to still send proceeds over mm -hmm. to keep a roof over their heads and to keep uh, food in their stomachs and stuff. So, uh, yeah, so, but COVID, COVID, uh, you know, I mean, because you're talking about like uh, safaris. Yeah. The safaris. They quit, they, yeah. Uh, depend a lot on. Uh, well, they get they depend a lot on outside tours. visitors, and yeah, tours, and things yeah, like that, right? Yeah, and th yeah. those all came to a that, screeching halt. That all halt, right? came to a screeching, screeching halt. halt and stuff. And so, uh, and so, what happened is, you know, I, in let me see, in November. Now I just went there in September. Mm -hmm. So in September, in 2019, the organization, we had just gotten to the point that we were taking our sponsors over there. Really? I was going to ask yeah. you, how many, when you go on these missions, first, first of all, how long are you gone and how many people go with you? Uh, about 10. So okay. I'm over there, no, I'm sorry. I'm over there about 10 days. Okay. Okay. And so uh, normally we take a mission team about 10 to 12. Okay. So we take a mission team of about 10 to 12. Mm -hmm. And so we're getting ready to take a mission. In 2019, we had just started, we had just evolved to the point that we were able to take our sponsors over there to see Africa, to lay eyes on the children. Well, so, I, I think a lot of sponsors, you know, uh, at some point they want to know, uh, What's really happening with sure. what I'm with, with sure. what I'm supporting, and sure. I think it's a good thing. Sure. I think it's a good thing they go and they see with their own eyes. Mm -hmm. This is what you're supporting, mm -hmm. and this is how you're making a difference. There you go. There you go. Right? And so one of the things uh, when we're there, we do a banquet, mm -hmm. and so uh, on the banquet, it's like a community day. Mm -hmm. We haven't uh, partners per se with a church or an orphanage. Mm -hmm. We have partnership with two organizations. Mm -hmm. Abba, we have partnership in the Leaf, and so what is their responsibility? They find us to children right and then we find the funding as far as being able to put them through school put them uh, uh, nutrition the medical we take care of all of that and so they find the actual children so ours is more or less like a scholarship type program uh, and, I gotcha. what, mm, and what I mean by so it's that, an ongoing effort sure for that particular mm -hmm. child yeah and what I, what I what I mean by that when I say it's like a scholarship now it's D don't get me wrong. There is free governmental education in Uganda. Right. There is free governmental education. The only thing is, though, you might have a hundred kids in one classroom with one teacher. A hundred kids, 
and their ages could be anywhere from 8 to 15. Exactly. Because sometimes they have money to go to school, sometimes they, they don't, don't have money, sometimes. So you have them from 8 to 15 maybe, and you'll have 100 kids with in With one class, teacher with or maybe an teacher. assistant. There you go. You got the big picture. Well, there you, you know, go. I'm just imagining. I mean, I've never ex actually experienced it myself, uh, unfortunately, because that, that's something that I think would be an incredible thing. Mm -hmm. um, but. I, I, you know, I can imagine that that's mm -hmm. what it's like. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what? We're under, uh, we're getting close to two minutes left. And mm -hmm. I always promise my guests that mm -hmm. uh, have NPOs and charities and whatnot mm -hmm. that uh, they have an opportunity to stare into their camera mm -hmm. and, and, and communicate anything message they want with our listening and watching audience. So take it away. Wow. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to be able to speak about something near to dear to my heart, which is Operation International Gift of Knowledge. We're a 501c3 nonprofit organization in good standing. Uh, we have 31 orphans uh, that we actually sponsor. Um, looking forward to being able to go back in May, in May and being able to take a team with us. Now, one thing I do want to say, uh, you have organizations like, say, Save the Children, uh, UNICEF. They are great organizations, great organizations. But I think one of the difference with my organization or our organization and one of the pillars that we actually stand on is I actually go there. I go there and I lay eyes on the children. I talk to our staff over there. I audit, I take a look at the book, so on and so forth. So we don't just send proceeds over, but we actually go over there and again lay eyes on the children. When we have the community day, when we have the community day, what we do is we take photos and video of all the children to bring back, to share with the sponsors, to let them know that the child is doing well, uh, you're seeing how the child is growing, so on and so forth. Now we have two types of funding, the two types of funding. So we have one which is sponsorship or subscribe. That is $55 a month. We do not, as an organization, touch that. The only thing we do is we transfer that. That's what we call restrictive financing. So that's restricted to the child. So $53 of that goes to the child. The $2 is for processing. Okay. And then we also have donations. Donations takes care of the day-to-day -day management of the uh, brand. It takes care of the T-shirts, brochures, so on and so forth. We are tax deductible, and so all of your contributions, again, uh, is tax deductible from the IRS. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Well, Nadir Johnson, I can't thank you enough for being oh, with me today on you. Connecting with Kim to talk thank about you. this wonderful organization. And we will, of course, do a lot of social posting on, on uh, media, uh, social media to uh, give everybody more information. Thank you. So um, that, unfortunately, is all we have time for today on this episode of Connecting with Kim. I want to give a shout out to my sponsor, the Spring of Tampa Bay, who, through the Spring Boutique located at the corner of Swan and Henderson, provides all of my on air clothes clothing, which includes, you know, it might include jewelry or whatever. So go to my Instagram and Facebook pages, Connecting with Kim, so that you can get all the specifics on what I'm wearing today and when it will be available in the boutique. So again, our corner of paradise is a little bit better today because you tuned in to Connecting with Kim. Come back next week.